var så. Det är Splice, det är Boobie Fan. Och det här är making. Video thoughts videos. Formerly known as commentaries. For 10 fucking years now. Exactly 10 fucking years. It's incredible. Now what should I do to celebrate this occasion? I already gave some of the history of the series. In some episodes of a retrospective series. And I intend to doing more in the future. So going over my history is it gonna happen. So what else can I do? I have an idea. I thank everyone in the slideshow commentary community who have helped me over the years. Now I know that there are people who haven't made commentaries who have helped me too. But I'm only going to focus on talking about those who are or were part of the slideshow commentary community. I will thank as many people as I can who helped me over the years. But before I go on, let me just say this. I appreciate the support from people who don't make commentaries as well. So anyway, without further ado, let's begin. But before I do, I'm gonna briefly talk about the first video thoughts episode that I made, formerly known as a commentary. To be honest, looking back, yes, it's extremely problematic, but I don't feel shame for that video anymore. I mean, after all, everyone has to start somewhere. It is extremely problematic, but it's understandable since it was the first one I ever made. Two of the biggest problems with the video are the fact that I repeated myself a lot and the fact that I didn't cut anything out of the original video. Again, those issues are understandable. Since it was my first commentary after all, the actual points in the video, honestly, weren't that bad. In fact, my point that some YouTubers are above the rules really was a legitimate point. Now, I was a huge fan of the arts fiend back then, but looking back, I regret it since he really was a jealous asshole back then. Not sure if he still is, so I haven't watched him in fucking years and don't intend on going back to his channel. But yeah, back then, he really was a jealous asshole and one of the worst YouTubers. But honestly, that shit is bad by the end of the day. If the points are still good, which most of mine were, that's all what should bear. As a matter of fact, come to think of it, the commentaries I made back then were at a pretty good quality. I mean, sure, compared to Youngblood Fantasy 91, Amskula 1, and Charles Hills 11, my commentaries back in 2010 were at a great quality, but at least the quality of those videos back then were somewhat good. I mean, hell, they were better than the movie reviews I made back then. In the movie reviews I made back then, I said nothing of substance. But in my commentaries back then, I actually did say something of substance. Most of the points I made in commentaries back then were substantial points. So I was good at something back then, besides my series Pokemon Gangster and my Pokemon Red Let's Play. You know, the fact that I did a somewhat good job back then is something that I should be fucking proud of, and I am. So yeah, even though my first commentary wasn't great, looking back, it was still somewhat good. I used to think that particular video was bad, but looking back, even though it wasn't great, it was still somewhat good, and I'm proud of that. Oh, and I forgot to mention you that I'm giving these people a shout out in no particular order. With that being said, there is one I'm definitely mentioning first. And he is done other than Chad Simpson 11. Now here's the main reason why I started commentating on other videos in the first place. He's the one who inspired me to get into the business. I saw his commentary on and the 17 productions that came to it and George Wood and thought they were amazing. Now he is the only one that I discovered at the time. He also discovered DLA Bauku. HLRA, WSD time, and of course, Amscola 1. Although all the people I mentioned had something to do with why I got into commentaries, they were my main inspiration, just as soon as 11 was. Anyway, if he just made videos which I enjoyed, I wouldn't be mentioning him in this video. As even though entertainment is something to be thankful for, it's not something worth thanking in a video, such so just making videos doesn't do anything for me personally. Oh yeah, he did far more than just make great videos and inspire me to make my own. He also was a big fucking supporter of the commentaries I made on NC17 Productions as well as the commentaries I made on the Arid Gamer. Although I'm not proud of the fact that I commented on them despite not being passionate about video gaming, I am very fucking glad that he supported me back then. My biggest inspiration also being a fan of my content 
It's fucking awesome and I couldn't ask for anything better. The next person I'm giving a shout out to is Master CB10. Now I've always considered him a good friend and I still do. He's a cool dude. Now when I made my awful commentary on M School of One, Master CB10 did make a commentary on that. And that's how I discovered his channel. And since then I have been watching it frequently. And he is, in my opinion, one of the greatest commentators of all time. But yeah, he was very fair in his commentary on my school of one video and I appreciate that. Now cut to four years later when I did that awful commentary on him. He was also fair there. And he even informed me beforehand that he was gonna respond to the video. And he appreciated how patient I was being. But looking back I think he was far too fair on me. Since my commentary on him which I made back in 2016 was so fucking bad. If there's one thing I deserved for that video, it was harsh criticism. Which, to be fair, someone did to another video of mine, which I will be talking about later on in the video. But yeah, Master TP10 is a fucking awesome commentator and a very good friend. The next person I wanna thank is Master Spurp, formerly known as Super Funny Brush. Now, even though he hasn't done a lot for me, he still did one thing for me that's worth doubting. He commentated on my awful commentary on M School of One. After he made the video, I realized the errors of my ways and understood jokes better. Or at least I thought I did, but apparently I still suck at detecting jokes. I am so fucking ashamed of that to be honest. Anyway, even though it wasn't acceptable that he said by the end of the video quit commentaries, you have to keep something in mind. His commentary was made in 2012. It was acceptable behavior back then to tell others to quit, but even then, he did say that because he thought that would help me. So it definitely came from the kindness of his heart. Although I suck at detecting jokes, I can now at least watch M School of One's commentary on PM Rants and see that he is just fucking joking for a lot of the video. So at least I have that. Alright, the next person I want to thank is Dustbar Gretan. Now he is in my opinion one of the greatest commentators of all time. But again, that's not the reason I'm thanking him. I'm thanking him because he did something nice for me back in 2015. You see, by that point, I hadn't made commentaries for three fucking years. I quit in 2012 because of my M School of One commentary. Now, Dr. Buckleton said something which I find extremely fucking encouraging. He said that even though he thinks that my commentary on Jeremy Chances Chappie review was awful, he still thought I had the potential to improve. And he was right. A lot of people really fucking enjoy my videos responding to movie reviews. Oh, and he is gone now. He doesn't make commentaries anymore. Not only that, he also privated all of his commentaries. But I did ask him a question in one of his streams. I asked him what he thinks of my movie reviews. And he did say that he did check them out. And he thought that he did a good job with that. Which is fucking awesome. And just like with Shadsons on 11. He was a big inspiration for me. And that is beyond fucking awesome. The next person I would like to thank is Backboy Detox. He isn't a commentator anymore, but I do remember back when he was, and he did help me. First off, when he made a commentary responded to one of Barton's terrible articles on the Eric Gaber, he recommended people to check out my commentary on the same article. Which is fucking awesome, and I appreciate that for sure. Oh, that's not the only thing he did for me. Back when I made my review of the Spongebob episode, Part 4 Curry, he also showed a lot of fucking support. Oh, and not to mention, he was and still is a good friend of mine. That's worth appreciating for sure. Now the next person to thank is someone who deserves a lot of fucking thanks from me because of how nice she has been to me throughout the years. Now 2016 is when I was at my lowest point when it came to my commentaries. I made five commentaries that year that were widely considered bad by the commentary community. And looking back, I really deserved to be a huge bandwagon back then. But despite how bad I was being that year, Doodle Tones was still a very good friend of mine. She wasn't exactly a big fan of my content, but she still respected me as a person. In fact, when she commented on my awful commentary on Autumn Chan, she was very nice to me. Looking back, she was far nicer to me than I deserved. And when I asked for some criticism, she was more than willing to give it to me. Now, this isn't something that just happened in 2016. She is a great friend of mine, even to this day. 
and she still helps me out a lot. But I might that video responding to. Now it talks to you video, Muslim logic fail. She looked over the video and explained to me what was wrong with it. And I understood the issues better because of it. Honestly, I could go on forever talking about how much she has helped me over the years. But I have a lot more people to thank for helping me out. So let's just move on. The next person I would like to thank is Mr. Demon Slayer. I know what some of you might be thinking. That he doesn't deserve any thanks because of the shit he did around 2018 or so. Honestly, I agree with that. But I will not be discussing that. Trust me, I said about the better. But he still did something great for me before that incident even fucking happened. So you know what? I'm gonna talk about it. He did support my commentaries for the most part, which I appreciate. And I also collaborated with him on a video. That was unfortunately the only time during my entire career that I did a co-op commentary with someone else. Which is fine, I don't really care anymore about doing a co-op with someone else. I prefer doing that in movie reviews. But yeah, he was a great fucking friend. I don't exactly respect him nowadays, but the purpose of this video is to thank people who have helped me in the past and are helping me now. And he definitely fits that bill, so even though I don't respect him as a person anymore, what he did in the past is worth remembering. Now, another person I would like to thank is Frozen Angel. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. You made a bad commentator Frozen Angel. Well, even though I'm willing to admit that he was far from a great commentator, he was still a good friend of mine and supported my content. And I think he might still be a fan of it, by the way. More on that later. Then the first thing he did to help was to respond to my... I will comment to you on the mysterious Mr. Hunter, and now I do not mean on this Cartoon Network rant. I mean on this review of the Space Monkeys episode, Going Bananas. Yeah, I clearly had a bias towards the mysterious Mr. Hunter back when I made the video. I'm talking back, I'm not a fan of it at all. And first an angel was trying to call me out. And you know what? He was being fair. Which looking back is a good thing. Even though my video was bad, it wasn't bad to the point where it deserved harsh criticism. I was still biased though, which was a big problem. Anyway, two years later, he commented it on my commentary on Dark Scythe, or Video Thoughts episode on Dark Scythe. Oh yeah, I made that video when my commentary is very titled Video Thoughts. Anyway, even though I disagree with a lot of what he said in the video, in fact, I would comment it on his commentary, on me if it wasn't for the fact that the video revolves around the drama. Frozen Angel still was fair and I appreciate that. So Frozen Angel, fucking thanks for the help over the years. I know that he doesn't like the slideshow commentary community anymore. But he did like it back when he commented it on my commentary on Mr. Hunter. So it still counts. The next person we will to thank is Slayer, which is spelled with 4 instead of A and 3 instead of E. Anyway, I have a lot to fucking thank this guy for. Now I did mention that I was a bandwagon in the commentary community back in 2016. Well, he was a fan of mine when that happened. Shortly after he joined the commentary community, he became a fan of my content. Fucking awesome! And I was even on his recommended feed for a long time. I'm not there anymore, but I appreciate the fact that I used to be. Anyway, what I appreciate about him the most is that he made a commentary on my god awful commentary on Doodletons titled Stupid Commentary Rules. Yeah, I clearly didn't understand back then why people put it out subjective points in commentaries. I do know, it's because the main purpose of commentaries is to argue with points. And by making a subjective point, you aren't arguing with anything. Yes, I still make subjective points in my video thought series, but that's only because I am not trying to argue with points, I'm just giving my opinion on the points. That was obviously not what most of the fucking commentary community does. As a matter of fact, most of the times when people are called out for making subjective points, they are fucking trying to argue. And there was a condescending cunt towards Doodletons in that video for no good reason as well, which Slayer and Blazing Hope called me out for. There are of course more things I can thank him for, but there are more people to thank, so let's just move on. The next person I would like to thank is Kirby Star Warrior. Admittedly, there isn't a lot I can thank him for, but there is one thing though. Now back in 2016, I made an awful commentary on Autumn Chan, and I deserved very harsh criticism for that video. And that's exactly what Kirby Star Warrior did. 
And yeah, I really did deserve very fucking harsh criticism for that video as it was that fucking awful. Anyway, he did say there was no hope for me for getting better. And I took it very personally and felt bad for a couple of years. He did apologize for the comment eventually, but it's understandable that he said that. Because I was very fucking stubborn back in 2016. But I have gotten better signs then, which I am proud of. But yeah, made a fucking great video on my awful commentary on Autumn Chan. And I did deserve all the best thing that I got for my awful commentary. But hey, at the very least, Autumn Chan herself took it well, so at least that's something. And now I'm gonna thank Luxter. Now even though I have it widely considered awful by the commentary community in 2018, far from it, my opinion on how to be commentaries was still very controversial back then. And looking back at my video response to the Irish Gamers Tetris review, yeah, it was pretty problematic. And Luxter did a great job responding to that video. In fact, he made what is, in my opinion, the best commentary of 2018. Now, he's the one who suggested to change the title of my commentary series to Video Thoughts in the first place. He's the reason to change the title of my series. And I appreciate that about him for sure. Oh, and he has done more. He's also a very good friend of mine. I did ask him to look over my review of Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. And although he did find some problems with it, he still think I did a fine job for the most part. Now he is one of my most trusted friends in the slideshow commentary community. And that's beyond fucking awesome. The next... Person I would like to thank is Neko Kota, formerly known as Kainu. Now they have done a lot to help me over the years. They are a fan of my videos which I do appreciate and one of the very few people in the slideshow commentary community who thinks that I'm a great commentator. And I appreciate that for sure. Now mind you, Neko Kota is not part of the slideshow commentary community anymore, but they used to be. Oh, and they also gave me an opportunity to be in a commentary group called Fuck. If you want more information about that, see the entry in my video Top 15 Greatest Place to Move for Bubbles of 2018. A link to it is in the video description below. The reason I'm not going into detail on that here is because, well, I don't want the video to be too long. So yeah, that's the best fucking thing they did for me. Let's move on. Now Solar Thunder is a very good friend of mine. And he is also a fan of my content, which I do appreciate. What I am most thankful for is his commentary on my awful video on Serena when I said that Serena is a dull cunt. What else can I say other than that he did a good job debunking the video. Aside from that, I talk to him a lot and we are very good friends. That's basically it, let's move on. Now Starkmaster15 has been a very great friend of mine. And I can thank him for that for sure. But the biggest thing he did for me was to commentate on my awful video thoughts episode on Amber's review of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. I am so glad that he pointed out all the issues with my video. Fucking thank you, Stackmaster, and I really mean that. Oh, and he is someone who I consider a great fucking friend even to this day. I'm never gonna stop appreciating that man. The next person to thank is Keyblade Master. Now, besides being a good friend, there are two things that I think I'm thanking for, for sure. Now back in 2017, I made an awful commentary on Pixel or whatever the fuck she was called, who commented on my commentary on Super Funny Bros. And yes, I'm talking about Super Funny Bros's most infamous commentary. Anyway, he pointed out legitimate issues with the video. And even though I disowned it before he finished his commentary, he still did a good job debunking that fucking video. That video was made in 2018, cut over a year later, and he, along with Slayer and Bowser 2 Dax, did a fucking amazing job covering my awful commentary and response to a lot of criticism that I got back in 2019. And you know what else those three did? Those three helped me understand the difference between discussion and debate. And I fucking appreciate that for sure. Now ignoring the fact that he is a very good friend of mine and did me those favors. I do think that he is one of the best members of the Slice of Commentary community. I mean, I have him on my recommended tweets for a reason, you know. So at the top of being a great friend, he is also fucking awesome at making commentaries. Now Space Guru 5. Now he hasn't commented on any of my videos. Nor has he criticized any of them in any way. But to be fair though, you don't need to do either in order to be worth thanking. 
The main reason I'm thanking him is because he's a very good friend of mine. I've told him many times that I think he makes great commentaries and he appreciates that for sure. And I don't blame him. Now I did make a commentary on him at one point. Or more specifically a video thoughts episode since those aren't really called commentaries anymore. Anyway, he was very fucking grateful for the video. And I'm glad that he took it so well. I want to thank him for that for sure. Oh, and even though he isn't a frequent butcher of my content, which is fine, honestly, he did watch my commentary on the Nostalgia Critics Mamma Mia review. I mean, video thoughts episode. And he did think I did a good job. Aside from that, though, he's a very good fucking friend. Ben is a human. So as it is, it was to say, I want to keep this very fucking brief. I appreciate the criticism on my commentary on the Mysterious Mr. Hunter's menus review. But aside from that, they are a very good friend, which I talk to a lot. And I showed them one of my spoiled movie reviews and was the fan, but gave me good criticism anyway. Let's move on. The Absolute Degenerate, or Megatron DBC, as he was known as when he was part of the slideshow commentary community. Now, I know he absolutely fucking hates it now, and doesn't like to be referred to as Megatron DBC anymore, but with respect, I'm gonna call him the Absolute Degenerate. But anyway, what can I thank him for? But most importantly for being a very good friend of mine. And when he did one shot on my commentary on Cinematic Venoms, Toaster Series Review, he brought up a very interesting point. But anyway, it's totally understandable that he no longer wants to associate with this slideshow commentary community. I don't blame him. He has legitimate issues with it after all. Now, Enigma Phantom did a commentary on one of my videos, but that's besides the point. I want to thank him for being a fan of my content as well as being a good friend. That's all. Let's move on. Honestly, there isn't anything I can say about Sian as, aside from the fact that I am thankful that he is a fan of my content and a good friend, which I talk to a lot. Now I'm aware that those dudes with a hat is not part of the slideshow commentary community and never was. In fact, he's the only one I'm mentioning in this video that has never associated with it. In fact, I'm not sure if he is even aware that it exists. But I have to fucking thank him. As you know, my video thought series mainly revolves around giving my opinion on a another video. His series review reviewer is exactly that. And he is the one who inspires me to make more of these videos. And I'm fucking thankful for that. I really am. He also responded to two of my spoiler movie reviews. The one I did on The Empire Strikes Back. And the Beauty and the Beast remake. I appreciate the criticism on both videos. I really do. Now Michael Sommer has done a lot to help the commentary community. Before he started making his own commentaries, he requested others to commentate on specific videos. He knew that the people were qualified to commentate on those videos. So he found the material for them and gave it to them. And eventually he started to make his own commentaries. Now, of course, I wouldn't mention him in this video if it didn't do anything for me specifically. So some of you might be wondering, what exactly did he do to help me specifically? Well, when I make that awful video defending the Metal Blade 5, he did a great job debunking the entire video in a long ass comment. And I appreciate that. I also asked him to look at my commentary on Jeremy Chancer's Beauty and the Beast 2017 review. And he was the fan and pointed out a lot of problems. They learned something from the experience. Well, I sure did. And that's the fact that I'm much better off making subjective videos rather than objective ones. As I am better at that, obviously. So, yeah. Now, there isn't much I can say about Mr. A. Aside from I appreciate him being a good friend. But there is one more other thing besides that which I can thank him for. And that's the fact that when I showed him a video, worst dramas in the commentary community, he said that my video was fine, which I do appreciate. I mean, fine isn't the same as fucking awesome, but it still shows that he didn't really say many issues with that video, which I fucking appreciate. Okay, Boonslayer isn't exactly a friend. I mean, I do have him added on my friend list on some sites, but we don't really talk that much. However, his commentary on, my awful commentary on Master TV 10 was fucking awesome, and I personally think it was one of his best. And he gave a lot of useful criticism in that video, which I appreciate. And he was also with Doodle Tones while debunking my awful video where I talked about things which I disagreed with in commentaries. Oh, and also, he is one of the greatest commentators of all time. I have him on my recommended feed for a reason. 
The next person I would like to thank is Slout and Styles. Now I totally understand why many people consider him to be one of the greatest commentators of all time. I don't agree with those people. I don't think he's anywhere near that great. But he still does a good job on what he does. He did a co-op with Silver. But that is not what I'm going to talk about. Instead I'm going to talk about his commentary on my commentary on Total Tones regarding this Go Animate shit. Unfortunately you cannot find that commentary anymore since Alton Styles fucking privated it. I did ask him why but he didn't respond. Which is a sign to me that it's none of my business. Which is fine. Anyway what do I want to thank him for? The fact that he said that he appreciates how much I can take criticism and how I can take criticism more than most people can. Thank you Lauten, I appreciate those fucking words. And he also brought up a nitpick, but even though it is a nitpick, it still helped me. He said that the video clips I used are in at a lower quality than the original video, and he is right. And you know what I did in later videos? I fixed that fucking problem, fucking hell yeah. Lauten Styles. Even though I don't think you're one of the greatest commentators of all time, you're still a very fucking cool dude. Keep up the good work, man. The next person I would like to thank is Stalsbeck. Now before he joined the commentary community, he didn't join my content, which I do appreciate. He has normally since I hang around with people from the Ranty community. Yeah, I know it's a term that no one uses anymore, but was once known as the Ranty community is now known as the Skeptic community. Anyway, when Kong made that awful video on me, he was one of the first fucking people to defend me from that video, which I do appreciate. Oh, and he also defended me later, sometime after he was done with the slideshow commentary community, from Donny Corks, which I appreciate for sure. And he is also a very good friend of mine, which I also appreciate. Oh, and lastly, I got to make a fucking cameo in one of his videos. So fucking epic, dude. The next person I would like to thank is 8363MTR. Or MTR for short, so I can't remember his fucking name. Anyway, he has been a very supportive friend. And he was so close, so fucking close to commentating on my commentary on Clay Claymore, which I made by the end of 2016. But he never got around to it. But thankfully, this year he showed me the script. And although I still stand by most of what I said in my commentary on Clay Claymore back then, I will admit that some of my points were problematic. Oh, and that Luxster commentary that I mentioned earlier on the video. He was actually a co-op partner of Luxster in that video. And his points were great too. Both did a fucking awesome job, honestly. Oh, and although his videos are nowhere near some of the best commentaries by the slideshow commentary community, he still does a good job. Not great, but good. The next person to thank is one of the most respected members of the slideshow commentary community, Youngblood Fantasy 91. Now he has done more than just make great videos. If that's all he did, I wouldn't be mentioning him here in this fucking video, obviously. Anyway, he says that he appreciates how I'm open to criticism. And yeah, I am. Grateful that he said that. Oh, and he was also in a stream with Doodle Tones on my video titled Things Regarding Commentaries I Don't Agree With. And he made some very good points in that video. Oh, and he's also a very nice guy to talk to. Moving on. The next person I would like to thank is Nihilistic Snake. I know what someone might be thinking. You mean Nihilistic Snake? One of the worst members of the slideshow commentary community. I mean, yes, they are one of the most hated members of that community. But there are a lot of commentaries which they made, which I don't agree with the hate for at all. Just their commentary on The Amazing Atheist and Rose. Ignoring that, back in 2016 when I was at my lowest point, they did support my content. Not necessarily my commentaries, they thought that they did a terrible job there. But they supported my movie reviews, which I do appreciate for sure. We are very good friends. And that remains true even four years later. Oh, and they also put one of my Video Thoughts episodes to Commentary Spotlights, which I appreciate. Oh, and they made me realize the errors of my base during my commentary on Macboy Redux, which I made back in 2016. At first when I saw Snake's commentary, I didn't change my mind on the video and thought that my video was still good. But years later, I disowned my awful fucking commentary on Macboy Redux. It was wrong of me to try to convince him to not think the video is that bad. That is a mistake I'm never doing again. The next person I would like to take is Vio Vega. 
Yeah, do that we your beka. Does it wanna associate with this slides or commentary community anymore? However, he does associate with people from that community. So he still counts. Now he was named something else in the past, but as he doesn't wanna associate with that name anymore, I respect that, so I won't say it. Anyway, he has been a very good friend of mine for years. He is the one that made me realize how fucking awful my commentary on that person who commented it on. My commentary on Super Funny Bros actually was. And he has also the reason I disowned that video before Keyblade Buster got around to commenting on it. Oh, and he also reviewed my script on my video on Doodle Tours which I made in November of last year. Yeah, he's a very good friend. What else can I say? Now there isn't much I can say about Blazing Hope besides the fact that she's a very good friend of mine. But I will say this. She did a fucking good job debunking my stupid commentary rules video along with Slayer. Yeah, it was a co-op. But aside from that, she is a very good friend, which I talk to frequently. Now, the Illogical Reaper didn't do much for me, aside from being a very good friend. But in one of his commentaries, he used me as a positive example. And thank you for that. I can't really get into any specifics, as I don't remember much about that fucking video. But I remember that, for sure. The next person I want to thank is Bowser 2 Dax. He does occasionally comment on my videos to give me some criticism, which I do appreciate. And let's not forget that he was a part of the try-up with Keyblade Master, the other being of course Slayer. And he was part of the reason why I understood the difference between discussion and debate more, and I'm thankful for that. And also the fact that he's a very good fucking friend. Johnny Roo, formerly known as Jonah Smith. I made an entire fucking video about it. So instead of saying in a nutshell what he did for me, I'm just gonna link it to the video description below. So yeah, go check it out if you wanna know why I am thankful for her. Oh, and she was referred to as a he back when I made that video. The last person to thank is Blazing Larvesta. Now admittedly, he didn't talk about my video spots and I doubt he even watches my video spots. But that's okay. We help each other out a lot, making the commentary community, Vicky, a better place and more informative. So blessing on Vesta, fucking thank you for the help to make that Vicky fucking better. Now I'm aware that I might have forgotten some people, but I had to keep the name everyone that I could think of. If there is someone in the slideshow commentary community which I forgot to talk about, my deepest apologies, I named everyone I could remember. You have reached the end of the video, thank you for watching, have a great day.